It's the end of February, so time to start thinking about the pests that'll start invading the fruit trees. So today I'm gonna be putting some grease bands on my fruit trees. When I walked out of my house this morning, you'd never know I'd be in the garden today working because there was a blanket of snow all over everything. But as you can see, the sun came out and the snow went away. It actually warmed up. It's actually kind of nice out uh, today. Cool, but it's nice out. And that's why I got to start thinking about the fruit trees. The uh, pests that'll crawl up out of the ground that have been overwintering and climb up the uh, trunks of the trees. When it gets like 40 degrees on a regular basis, uh, that's when they'll uh, emerge. And while we've had a uh, a real mix of weather. I always thought March was supposed to be the uh, month with changeable weather, but February, we've gone from uh, polar vortexes to uh, 50, 60 degree weather. So uh, this past week, it's actually been down in the 30s on a regular basis. But now, I'm ever the optimist, and with the sun out right now, I'm sure that because the groundhog didn't see a shadow, that uh, spring is coming. And I'm getting ready to uh, be out here. So let's show you how I'm going to go about doing the uh, grease bands. I'm using a product called Tree Tanglefoot. It's a really sticky substance. Um, it says it's uh, OMRI organic certified. It's not harmful to uh, the trees or to humans. What it does, it's made of resins, but it's super sticky. As the larvae and caterpillars and ants climb up the tree, they'll uh, come up to this barrier that I'm going to put on of this tangle foot, and they'll get stuck in it and won't be able to get up to the fruit. Last year, my peach harvest uh, was uh, decimated uh, by some insect. I'm not sure whether it was the plum curculio or some other insect, but they all had these uh, little uh, nicks in them, and this uh, sap seem to be uh, bulging out of them. So this year I'm gonna uh, take a better, uh, a proactive uh, stance on uh, attacking them. Because it's organic, I imagine I could just apply it right to the bark of the uh, tree, but the uh, uh, people that make the uh, tree tangle foot recommend using uh, this banding, it looks like a paper, like a paper band that you'd uh, wrap around the uh, uh, trunk of the tree and uh, then you apply this over the top of that. Uh, I think this would can stain the uh, tree if you apply it right to the bark. What I'm going to use instead is this tape. Now this is, this isn't, you won't find this in the uh, garden center. This you'll find in the hardware department of uh, your big box stores. It's flagging tape or marking tape. And I'm just going to wrap this around the uh, tree and then uh, apply the uh, tangle foot over the top of it. Now the reason I'm using this instead of the other product is uh, for one, this is, uh, it's like a plasticky uh, type of thing. So it, uh, it's water resistant. Um, it's not going to rot. It's not going to fall apart. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to wrap the tape around the trunk of the tree. Now, uh, the Tree Tangle Foot Company uh, recommends doing it about four feet off the ground, three to four feet off the ground. And that's because you want to minimize any dust and dirt that could uh, possibly spray up and coat the uh, barrier which would then provide a bridge for the insects to crawl over uh, the top. I think this is probably about two and a half, uh, to about two and a half feet off the ground here, and I think that should be sufficient. It's also necessary because the uh, tree branches out just above where I'm going to uh, be doing this, so this is about as high as I can go anyway. But I think that should be sufficient since I've got a wood chip uh, uh, mulch at the base of the uh, tree so I'm not really worried about any dirt that's going to be uh, splashing up onto this. I think as long as you're not near, really near the ground, you should probably uh, be safe. 
so I'll start by wrapping around the, the tree. And as you notice, I'm starting at the bottom. Yep. Can you see? <laughs> starting at the bottom and winding my way up, overlapping each uh, band. And that way, it serves like the shingles on the roof of the house and everything just will drip down uh, over rather than going into each individual row. They also recommend about a three inch band, which should be sufficient there. So I'll just take a little bit extra like this and it breaks easily. And now I'll just stick my finger how am I doing this here? I'll do it over here. Stick my finger underneath. Take this. Yep. And stick it up underneath and pull it through. And then I can just tighten it up. Like that. And then I can snap it off. I'll take the tangle foot. I said this stuff is pretty thick and I'm just going to paint it on and you just need a very thin coat uh, the company recommends as a heavy coat uh, 3 30 seconds of an inch so you really just need uh, a thin band and just spread it out Take a little bit here and stick it on and glue that <laughs> tail down. And so this is February and the optimal time to be doing this is actually late in the season because the uh, larvae can, uh, they're active from like October on. They, they slow down in the winter time, but uh, during the fall months, they can uh, climb up. So that's actually the time you want to uh, start uh, up applying a band to your, uh, to your trees. And then it, this should last for um, until the springtime. Well, assuming this was October that I'm applying it, it should last uh, through to the springtime when I would then come out like now and apply another one. It says uh, it should uh, last for, should remain tacky for um, several months. And if you do find that it's hardened over, like it really should harden over, but if it's um, like it doesn't have the same uh, stickiness in a couple of months that it uh, did when you first applied it, you can actually uh, rub it off and you'll get the uh, tackiness again. Uh, or you can probably just apply another coat right over the top. If it comes uh, clotted with uh, bugs and uh, things of that nature and dirt, you can just uh, take it off and apply a new one. So this is the first time applying this to the trees and uh, we'll see how it goes. But I'm going to go around the back and uh, get the back of it too. And that's all there is to it. You've got now a, a protection against some of the uh, uh, pests that will climb up your tree bark. and. Uh, attempt to attack your uh, fruit that you've got in the trees. So I've got two more trees I'm going to do. These seem to be, these are the biggest ones that'll uh, be fruiting this year. I've got other, about 10 other fruit trees, but they're uh, too small right now to uh, 
be bearing any fruit, so I'm not going to be worried about them until they get a little bit older. Uh, so I got two more, and I'll be right back. And there it is. All four trees are done and protected in that manner. As you notice, this one's actually a lot lower to the ground than these are, and that's because of the way this uh, tree is uh, grown. It's got that uh, branch. I've been thinking about cutting off this branch anyway, but for now, we'll leave it down there, and we'll revisit that sometime in the future. One other thing you want to be careful of is you don't want to create a bridge in some other fashion for the insects to get over. When these uh, trees were growing, I had stakes in the ground with some uh, uh, ties to them to keep them uh, straight. And if the barrier is below that tie, then the insects can climb up the post across the, uh, uh, the chain or whatever it was, and then up the, the tree anyway. So you want to uh, be careful that you don't have anything like that and that this is set above any kind of potential bridge that you would make um, that might be present on your trees. One thing I have to be careful of, my neighbors, they have a, a, these uh, trees on their side and they'll sometimes, well, when these trees start to uh, grow, they can uh, become entangled. Um, so I'll be careful of that uh, in the future, uh, later on in this uh, growing season. But also, they have a wild uh, grapevine that grows over there, and it tends to get tangled up in the trees. So you just got to make sure that there's nothing like that uh, in your trees to, again, provide a bridge for the bugs to go from one end or one uh, tree to another. You also want to make sure that your own trees aren't providing a bridge too. All four of these trees uh, have been protected, so the bugs theoretically won't be climbing up and then crossing over. But if you have a tree in your yard that's not protected by the uh, barrier and it's touching the branches of your trees, uh, you want to make sure that they don't because, again, it can provide a, a bridge for the pests to get over. So this is a pretty safe and effective uh, pest control uh, solution that's really pretty cheap. That tub is 15 ounces and it cost me $11 on Amazon uh, with Prime, so it got to my house in two days. It's gonna, because you're applying so little of it each time, that's gonna last a, a good long time years I can see that uh, lasting so it's a good investment cleanup is really simple too it's uh, baby oil or uh, mineral spirits followed up with uh, soap and water so it is sticky <laughs> and uh, so you'll want to uh, probably wear some kind of gloves when you do it unlike how I did it this time all right if you like what you see give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you'd already do so and hit that alarm bell, and that way you'll be notified right away when videos like this are posted. Okay, thanks for watching. And just as a follow-up to indicate <laughs> my optimism in the groundhog and that spring had finally come, here we are getting hit with yet another snowstorm two days later. This is actually the third snowstorm in three days, and... We've got uh, another one scheduled for tonight and possibly Monday, too. But it doesn't actually affect the, uh, the tree bands. They, uh, they're still sticky, even if they get covered with uh, snow.